Uh, this dude was following around a big Valentine cosplayer, and he was following around some Pokemon cosplayers. Uh, and then they finally threw him out when he started making, like he was asking people to post for pictures, and then as they would, you know, go, be like, oh, no, 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 I want you to, and start posting that, like asking them to post in certain ways. And somebody heard one request that was too creepy, so now we have rules about photography in the hallways. Uh, so yeah, creepy photography stuff happens a lot. Um, man, I almost don't even want to bring up the rave stuff, because you guys are so well behaved at the dance, like, I don't want to tell you about the awful things I deal with in the States. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. Are you yeah. DJing the dance? Yeah. Is yeah, it yeah, not on the schedule this year? It just says dance. Oh, uh, yeah. I would imagine so. If not, I brought a whole bunch of stuff with me for no reason. <laughs> a whole bunch of brand new music, too. Uh, yeah, we've had it. So, since I'm talking about the dance, I guess I'll talk about some things that we deal with. Uh, and it, it's not that it couldn't happen here. It's just you guys are so well paid. Uh, we deal with a lot of sexual harassment at the dances, actually. Guys getting a little grovy and a little touchy-touchy. Um, and the dance is one of the hardest places to solve problems. Why? Because it's dark. Two, it's crowded. Uh, you can't... Well, I tell everybody to put their hands in the air, but that doesn't mean somebody's not going to. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to monitor just because it's a really big audience and, and whatnot. So. Uh, the big football nerd, not American football, European football, the big football nerd in me has come up with a new system. Well, one, last year we had four girls sexually harassed on the dance floor, which bothered me because no one said anything to me until like two days after the show was over. Well, if you don't tell somebody, I can't get creepo, you know, creepazoid out of the dance, which is the most important, like the first the most important thing is to tell somebody, like, yo, know, that guy's touching my bum, or whatever. And, uh, and then someone will go, you know, did you touch her bum, whatever. And then, then security at least knows to look out for this guy or girl, like they're trouble. So, um, I wanted to do two things, because I don't ever want women to feel unsafe at my dances, because it was all women that were attacked this year. Not that it can't go the other way. Um, so I asked my friend, who is not only a female soccer player, but she's also a roller derby player, uh, to be my female head of get, uh, my female head of security for the dance. So I've got this like <laughs> awesome little linebacker of a security guard now, and she's gonna have a hole punch with her. And if she punches your back once, you've got a yellow card. If she punches your back a second time, she's keeping it. And we have a two, it's a two strike rule. Like if you get caught once. We had to give you some kind of leniency though, because there's a lot of drama too. Drama at conventions? <laughs> Say this and so. Uh, so we had to have a way that we couldn't let somebody like, oh, well, I hate that guy, I'm going to say he touched my bum. So like, we had to set up a system so that you know it's, it's open for discussion. And uh, she's really cool. I'm really excited that she's going to do that for me, because then we can get back to playing music and making the lights go. And uh, this year I have a streamer cannon that I'm building. Uh, the DJs, the DJs, uh, I won't have it here, but once I, once I get the plans for it perfect, I will tell everyone to make them. What other things can we talk about security things I can mention? Y'all help me, just woke up. Someone was supposed to wake me up before they left to go get in. And uh, somebody was going to go get in line, and I said, hey, make sure to say something on the way. And I woke up to my honey boo boo alarm, and it was terrifying. It was supposed to like, not let me wake up to honey boo boo. I tried. Did you say something on the way out? I said twice, and I even set my alarm for 11 for you. Oh, you, oh that's why that weird alarm went off at 11. Okay, now it makes sense. This is my friend Chris, by the way. He's just hanging out with me this weekend. Uh, yeah, I've got a great thing. If you want to ever make sure you never oversleep, find the person's voice who annoys you the most. And maybe you're really tight. Mine is honey boo boo. Because uh, she's awful. Um, uh, so, what else? Uh, we talked about like the rave stuff, creepy camera guy. Who Who's brought someone that's never been to a convention the first time? I know there's one. Are you, are you, you brought somebody new? Yeah. Awesome. So, what do you do to get like your friend or your sister, in your case, prepared to go to a convention for the first time? Drove me here. Drove me here. Here you go. That's all the preparation I gave him. That's so funny. So no warning. You didn't tell him not to go to the alley panel. No. No warning. You still in the trial by fire. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna. Throw
throw him in a room and hope he comes out. <laughs> you thought it was a Super Smash Brothers tournament, and it's actually Uncle Jenna. <laughs> All I was told was just go see you. That's what I was told. Go the see you. Go see me. I've got, like, I hate your fandom would be much funnier than this. Uh, I just do this one as a service in case. Go see Uncle Jenna. It's offensive and weird and dirty, but it's the funniest thing on earth. Uh, you have your monkey. Mr. Bear, unfortunately, is at my parents' house. I said, hey, can you get Mr. Bear? You know, he's in this, he's in my old room. And they pulled him out, and I was in such a hurry to the airport. I left Mr. Bear sitting on the table. So I may have to go buy a plushie to break down the tennis. I brought my penguin romper, though. So if I don't find something I like better this year, because I've been thinking about buying a new one. Uh, it's, so there's lots of things that go on. Obviously, there's lots of different things. With that convention, and one of the coolest things that I'm scared to do at convention is doing a lot of 18 plus events. Well, um, and I think the voice actors or the guests have one right before Uncle Jenna. It's in this room, and then, or wait, we're in the same room, right? They're both yeah. in this room. 10 o'clock in the night. Even better. <laughs> uh, so we'll be sitting. We'll probably sit on those for that. I just feel dumb sitting lounging on a sofa while y'all are sitting in like school chairs. But uh, yeah, like I've already talked about the the, the homestuck hunters. Uh, we also had an incident where a girl's wings were broken right before she went on stage, which was really crappy because it was done by another contestant, and she walked on stage with her her costume and was not, you know, at its best. Um, cosplay, we deal with so many things uh, right now. Uh, what are, okay, if you were going to start your own convention, what are some rules you would set down on cosplay? Yes, you go, that's already one, like, I have a rule. Exactly. The, like the flow of traffic is not a great place for a photo. Like, and that's why like a lot of conventions have a photo area set up now, because it never fails. And it, it would be horrible to be dressed as a popular, popular character. Like I've always said that, because I'm a, like I've always been an anime fan, but it's weird because I can't go to conventions anymore without being a voice actor, because people know what I look like and know my voice. And I said maybe I'll go dressed as Totoro one day. Do you know how little peace you would get if you were dressed as Totoro? Like, you wouldn't be able to walk two feet with a Can I, Dodo, can I get your picture? So, like, I have to find, like, and Jigglypuff, I think, would get just as much attention. I have to find some full body costume that won't, like, lumpy people for the space princess would get a lot of attention. Like, all the ones that I can think of. Uh, but yeah, I always think it's weird when people get stopped in the middle of a hall and they're like, Can I get your picture? Well, no, can we, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to this panel. Like, well, then you don't get your picture. Find me later. Like, most people that are in costume will be in that costume for at least a few hours. Unless it's your hard, hardcore cosplay friend that has, like, four costumes each day. I would be in my Sanzo costume from, like, I have one, I have a friend that does that. I bring, like, five or six costumes per show. For, like, just constantly changing. Uh, what other cosplay? So what other things would you make? Uh, what about weapons? Cosplay weapons. What do you think you do with cosplay weapons in general? I like the break. If you if it breaks on them, it's good. If it breaks them, it's bad. No wait, we should re-explain that. It's if you a have a weapon and uh -huh. it breaks on the person, it's okay. But if it breaks the person, it's not uh, okay. That's a great way to put that. So feel like yeah, if if when striking someone, your weapon would break, it's good. Yeah, like uh, there. I mean, it's weird because there's actually a convention in the states that allows people to carry live steel and. I don't know how any of those people, I don't know how any of the organizers think they could get insurance for that event. And it must be something they're not forthright with. Uh, we were watching, we were like, I've only been to that convention once, but they make the actors judge cosplay, which is weird, because normally actors are not allowed. They're, I'm a famous person at cosplay.com. You're just Scott McNeil, get away. Like, I actually saw something get ugly with Scott McNeil, they're like, uh, well, I know costumes, and Scott McNeil's like, I've been in theater my whole life, I know costumes too. Well, uh, but they were fighting with live steel. They were doing a sword fight on stage with steel. Now, here's the thing, a lot of swords that you buy in vendors' rooms are cheap. And they're what we call, uh, uh, where's my brother when I need him? Okay, the safe one is called a full tank sword. That means that the metal that is the blade actually extends down into the handle, so that when you strike something, which the point is to cut all the way through it, uh, that it doesn't break off. Well, a lot of cheap replica swords that you see conventions, 
the metal only goes as far as the handle, and it usually just fits into a little area. Well, these two kids are fighting, 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 and this blade goes, and we heard it break off, and so I just go, and we're just like, oh. Luckily, it was like about as far from the stage as here, and it landed in the floor. But I was just thinking, like, why have not gone into the audience? Like, wow, Kenshin got speared. You know, like, I mean, that's horrible. Like, it's the first time you have that at a show. So I like the general rule that props, um, we have a, we actually just set a size limit on props in uh, Ohio this year. It can't be larger than 10 feet in any direction. And we had people that argued with us on it. Well, my blaster short is 12 feet. You don't need to be carrying anything that is 12 feet around the hotel. Sorry, you need a smaller buster sword. Uh, so I like the idea of limiting the size of uh, things and what, like, what they can be made out of. I don't think there's any reason to have, you know, a, a weapon made of steel. Like, plus, it takes as how many cosplayers? How many of you make your own costumes? Of those, how many of you make your own props? Cool. Most, most all the same hands. To me, finding a way to make a prop that looks cool out of non-destructible goods is fun. Like, finding meta you know, metallic and reflective, like well, now they have the reflective paint, that mirror paint is perfect. But uh, I've seen uh, people make some really fascinating things for weapons that weren't a danger to anybody. I like that if it breaks, if you hit someone with it, it breaks, then it's good. If it breaks, then it's bad. I like that wording.